Hey, what's up everyone? Adam here with Probably Got This, and today I wanna try to help players figure out what they should do once they hit level 50 and are in the CP levels. Leveling to 50 can be done in so many ways. You can power level, quest, do dungeons, and many more things. So when you get to 50, you might be like, okay, is there anything essential that I need to do? What is the end game like? Can I even attempt the end game? Well, there is a plethora of options to choose from, and a lot of people ask me this question when they hit 50 and are a new player. So let's go ahead and show you what to do when you hit level 50. Before we get started, I want to remind you that if you want to watch me play live, I stream on twitch.tv slash this on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you want to join a growing community of new and veteran players, you can join my Discord, the Brafia, and my guild, the Necrodaddies. All the links will be in the description. Also, if you like this content and want to support me, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and heavy attack the bell icon so you can get notified when I post new content. But let's go ahead and jump into the video. So to start off, some of these options are going to look a little different if this is an alt character and you are in the CP levels, like high CP levels versus players that are on their first character hitting level 50. So I'm going to break down what to do when you are a new player hitting 50 and if this is an alt character. We will start with new players first. Timestamps will be in the description as well. Also, if you want to check out my complete level 1 through 50 guide, that will also be in the description. So I want to start off by saying questing is something you can always do but should continue when you hit 50, especially if you're a new player. This is a relaxing and fun way to understand the world of ESO and just to get your feet wet in the game. You can get loads of skill points, achievements, and other cosmetic things from doing this. There's a lot of amazing quests in this game that aren't just fetch quests that you should totally dive into. So I just want to mention that because questing is a great option when you hit 50. The next thing I want to talk about is the guild skill lines. If you haven't already, before 50, which I'm hoping that you have, activate the Undaunted, Fighters, Mages, and Sigic Order guild skill lines. The Sigic Order requires Somerset expansion, so if you don't have that, then that's okay. But to activate the Undaunted, you go to Vocal Guard and go to the Inn and talk to Turex Red Claw to unlock it. For the Fighters Guild, just go to your Starting Alliance town and go to the guild and talk to someone in there to activate it. For Sigic Order, you need to complete the first quest in the Somerset uh, zone and get to the Arteum where you can start the line. And then to do the Mages Guild, it's the same thing. Just go to the Mages Guild and start the quest there as well. Once you've done these, these are four really important lines that need leveling for almost all builds in the game. The Undaunted line has skills that tank, DPS, and healers both use. The Fighters Guild has skills that all classes use. The Mages Guild has skills and ultimates for Magicka DPSs, and Sigic Order is mainly used for Magicka DPS classes. The quickest way to level the Fighters Guild line is by doing Alakir Domans. Every time you complete one, you will get Fighters Guild experience, and since there are a lot of Daedra in it as well, that's more Fighters Guild experience there. Killing Undead and Daedra, like I said, also level it, so you can do that anywhere in the world. For Undaunted, this is the dungeon line, you could say. You need to complete daily Undaunted quests like Pledges, Undaunted Dungeon Achievements, and just doing dungeons in general will level this up. We're going to go in more depth about Pledges and more Undaunted stuff here in a little later in the video. For the Mages Guild, this is something that you can level by collecting the blue glowing books you see around Tamriel called Lorebooks. If you're on PC, you can download the Lorebooks add-on, and it'll show you all of them in the game. There will usually be about four grouped in an area. Once you grab one of those, the others will be gone. Collecting all the lore books in a zone will give you a bonus Mages Guild experience, so try to do complete zones at once. Now, for Sigic Order, you need to just follow the quest line of the guild. These are a pain in the ass, and I'll be making a guide on this soon, but it's better when you have friends, but basically you're just closing portals and rifts and leveling it up that way. But these skill lines are a pretty big thing you can focus on when you hit 50 if you haven't been doing them yet. I highly recommend doing some of these while you level to 50, actually. The next thing I'm going to go into is the random dungeons and battlegrounds. Basically, you should be doing this already, not just when you hit 50, but if you haven't been, make sure to run your random dungeon each day. It will give you a huge bonus experience buff once a day. This will also level up your Undaunted, give you rewards in your inbox, and just help you learn the dungeons. Next, you need to do your random battlegrounds each day. This will give you an experience buff as well, like dungeons, and it will level your PvP lines up. You can only get the bonus experience if you place first or second out of three teams in Battlegrounds. You will most likely need one skill from PvP for your builds. You can also travel to Cyrodiil and make sure to complete the intro quest to give you a nice little bonus experience as well. 
Make sure to do these every day when you hit fit level 50 because it will help you level to CP160 quicker. The reason you want to hit CP160 is because this is when all the gear in the game caps. Now we are going to go into things to do that are for new players and people that have alts. And alts, like I said, mean like people that have already leveled up multiple characters to 50 and they have high CP and this is just another alt and they're trying to figure out what to do at level 50. And they might already know, but again, I just want to try to help people out with this. The first thing for both parties is make sure you're taking advantage of your enlightenment. Enlightenment is something you will gain as a new player right when you hit 50. What enlightenment is, it is essentially stored experience that will be gained at a faster rate. This has a max amount of experience you can store in your enlightenment pool, and it will replenish when you aren't playing. So basically, if you go away for a few days or a week, you'll come back with some enlightenment experience. So for veteran players or people that have alts, you probably won't have a lot of enlightenment, but when you do, make sure you capitalize. So for new and alt characters, make sure you do your random daily dungeon in your battleground, like I said before. You can also grind out dolmens and other experience grinds like Skyreach or Spell Scar. This will take full advantage of your enlightenment. Next, another thing you can do when you hit 50 is your writs. If you haven't been doing your crafting writs yet, that's something you can decide to do or not before you hit 50, but when you hit 50, you will be seeing the in-game mats around the world. So try to get your crafting professions up to 50 so you can do the level 50 writs, which give the master writs and a lot of other things to sell. If you want to watch my beginner and master crafting guide, I will link those in the description as well. But this is something that is a massive to do when you hit 50. Some people love crafting, and so this will keep you occupied for a very long time. You will always be viable because you can craft training sets for people, do master it, and make sets for yourself, and make tons of money from crafting. While we're on the topic of money, another thing new and veteran players can do when they hit 50 is do money-making methods. You'll find out that in ESO, doing fashion or decorating your house or making yourself look badass will require either grinding, some luck, or making money to buy the motifs and transmogs. If you want to check out all the ways you can make money, you can check out my money-making guide in the description as well. But just to give an overview, you can do stealing loops where you go around and steal items and gold from towns. You can farm daily quests to get motifs. You'll, we will go over that here in a few. You can farm DLC dungeon motifs, which sell for a big amount of money again. We'll go over that as well in a few minutes. You can also do crafting writs, like I mentioned, and sell the mats for gold. This is a very common thing to do when you hit 50 in the Elder Scrolls Online. And by the way, I'll have a lot of videos in the description for you guys that if you're new to this game, you guys can check out. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Daily quests in expansion or DLC zones are the things you can do at level 1. But a lot of people don't do them then. Because they are new and want to quest and get the feel for the game, or they just don't know about them. Most of these dailies require you to just grab a note in the city somewhere or talk to someone to start them. But these are in Rothgar, Craglorn, Somerset, Vardenfell, Ellisworth, Merkmire, Clockwork City, Hughesbane, and the Gold Coast. When you complete these, they all have a chance of dropping specific motif pages of that zone, which some are pretty pricey, but they are also able to be consumed. And when you consume them, it lets all your characters use that specific motif style as a transmog. Or you can craft that style on that specific piece on that character. These can be done on all of your characters each day. This can keep you occupied if you're looking for something to do at 50 for a long time. This again can be something a new player hitting 50 can do, but also an alt character for sure. Now with motifs, you will also have farming DLC dungeon motifs. This is something that really only alt or high level CP characters can do. Unless you're getting carried really hard, you shouldn't try these at a low level. But for new players right now, when you hit 50, this won't be something you'll be able to do, like I said, but these are very pricey. The chess pieces for most dungeons sell for around 200k a pop, and the other pieces are expensive as well. If you do the dungeon on vet hard mode, you will get a guaranteed drop. If you do it just on veteran, it's a chance. But this is a challenging yet very lucrative thing to do after 50 if you're able to do it. So next, something you can do after 50 for new players or players with alts is pledges. These will actually unlock at level 45 and you will get an invitation to your Undaunted Enclave. If you're in the Aldermary Dominion, it will be in Grotwood. If you're in Daggerfall Covenant, it will be in Wayrest. And if you're in Ebonart Pact, it will be in Mournhold. This will open up a daily quest and three daily pledges you can complete each day on all of your characters. These three vendors will give you a random dungeon that is the pledge of the day from their dungeon pool. The orc will give you all DLC dungeons and the other two are base game dungeon givers. What happens is you have to kill specific bosses in each dungeon to get one undaunted key if done on normal or veteran. If you do on veteran hard mode, which will require you to do a specific challenge at the final boss, you will get two undaunted keys. You will get a monster helm of that dungeon when completed on veteran mode guaranteed. 
With these keys, you can go back to your enclave and open chests with each vendor that are the dungeon chests. These will use five, these chests will use five keys, and it will give you the opportunity to get the shoulder piece of the monster set of that dungeon. These two-piece monster sets are some of the best in slot two pieces that most all in-game builds use. However, when you are 45 or below CP 160, do not open these chests. Save your keys because you want to use them when your armor is dropping at CP 160, not at 50 or CP 30 per se. This is something you can always do after level 50 because it is a key part of the end game and you will need undaunted keys. Next thing we're going to talk about is for both new players and the players that are already in CP. This is one of the biggest things you can do and again is a very important thing to do when you hit 50 because it's necessary and that is farming skill points. If you're a new player and you have been questing a bunch and just taking your time through the game, you will probably have an excess of skill point. But when you hit 50, you will still need more, especially if it's your main account. You will want points to put into crafting, into passives, and other skills in case you want to switch it up at some point. And for all characters with high CP already, you will definitely need these because you probably aren't questing again on your alt character. There are a couple ways to farm these. One is you can just run through zone to zone and collect sky shards. For every three, you'll get one skill point. You can also complete public dungeons. When you complete the group boss in a public dungeon, they will always give a skill point. You can complete any dungeon you haven't done yet. These will reward one skill point. And lastly, you can farm Craglorn, the group zone. Every group delve will give you a skill point. This is a big thing to do when you hit 50 because you will need those no matter who you are. Also, another thing I wanna mention that you can do after you hit level 50, and you can do this before you hit level 50, but again, if you're looking for things to do, is uh, doing world bosses. Uh, world bosses have uh, you know loot in the overland that you can get from them. They're usually like a four player activity and they're usually pretty challenging. There's six of these in every base zone and then you have like a random amount of them in DLC and expansion zones, but most expansion zones have six and then DLC zones have like two or three. And then along with world bosses, you can also do delves and public dungeons. And delves are like little mini bosses in there with a sky shard in each one of them and they all have a quest that you can do inside the delve there's six of these as well in each uh zone uh, base zone and again same with like expansions and dlc zones and then with public dungeons sometimes there's two in a zone um, there's usually always one public dungeon in a zone these have around six bosses they have a sky shard in them you'll get a skill point from the group event there's also a quest that you can get with a memento in them and they're, uh, they have a lot of enemies and they're designed to have, you know, multiple people in them so you can do them with other people in the world. So these are other things that you can do in ESO once you hit 50. Next thing is housing. This is going to be for really anyone and you don't have to wait until 50 to do this, but it's something to grind for and do when you're higher levels and have more gold or more items. Housing is so deep in this game and there's so much to buy to put in your house. It's insane. You can also have any amount of houses you want to, so that's pretty wild. If you want to check out my beginner housing guide, again, it will be in the description as well. The next thing is just to straight up level and grind for levels. You can do this in many ways, but some of the most common ways are Alakir Domens, any weak mobs like zombie spots, random dungeons, uh, spell scar and skyreach catacombs. There are an insane amount of ways to level. Everyone has their preferences, and some areas are crowded at certain times of the day. So this is always something to, you can grind for, especially for new players that hit 50 and want to get to CP160 eventually, because like I said, that's when the gear caps. But I do recommend new players taking their time first through because it will allow you to learn the game, like I said. Another thing to do when you hit 50 is PvP. This again is more for people with high CP or CP already when hitting 50 because you have a more optimized build or set and you're ready for that and you might know the mechanics better. I'm not a big PvP player myself, and of course, you can do PvP sub 50, but when you hit 50, you can really start to dive into PvP in this game and use some of those in-game sets you've been grinding for, or builds you want to try out, or you can try to go for Emperorship, which takes forever, but you can always do that. The last thing I want to mention is Trials in Maelstrom Arena. This is one of the biggest parts to grind for and for the end game. There are 12 men raids that span across the whole game. This is mainly for people with alts because you will probably need to be at least CP 160 to run most normal trials. So if you're a new player, just take your time and you will get to CP 160 eventually or you can grind fast to it, but 
Just wait till you hit 160 CP before you try normal trials, in my opinion. These are home to a lot of best in slot in game sets that your character will be running. They're fun, challenging, and rewarding. These can reward motif pages like DLC dungeons, which are expensive on veteran difficulty. These can reward titles, skins, amount, and personalities by completing various veteran achievements. They have normal mode, veteran mode, and vet hard mode. These are the pinnacle of the end game, and this is what a lot of players grind for. Now, Maelstrom Arena is a solo activity that has raid-like mechanics and difficulty. It is a wave-based event and can reward players with some of the best in slot weapons for some classes. The trials in this game, plus Maelstrom Arena, is definitely something to look forward to when you hit 50. It's, again, the thing that is really the pinnacle of the end game when it comes to ESO. So that's going to wrap up the video, guys. I really hope that you guys uh, enjoyed it. I hope that it helped you guys out, especially for newer players that are kind of confused or stuck on what to do when they hit 50 and they don't want to quest, you know, or something like that. And for even veteran players that are looking for th more things to do and they just haven't thought of some of these things, um, I hope that this video helped you guys out. A reminder, guys, if you want to ever, if you're, especially if you're new, but if you're a veteran player too, if you want to join my Discord, the link will be in the description. If you want to join the guild, let me know. Come into the Discord. Ask for a guild invite. If you want to watch me play live on twitch.tv slash this, I stream again Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can always come and ask questions and hang out. You know, we have a great community growing right now, good group of people, so it's really, really awesome. And then also, guys, if you guys, uh, you know, like the video, again, just like, subscribe, ring the bell if you want to be notified for when my next video is out. But yeah, guys, so um, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. So just remember, guys, to have faith, be great, and I'll see you guys on ESO.